In this video, I'll be going over how I made dynamic speech bubbles that are linked to a Google Sheet that also have dynamic composition, scripting, and bounding attributes. So first of all, I'm going to be setting up a lot of different things that will all connect together in the end. And I'll try to explain everything as I go, but I think this is the quickest way to just kind of show everything works together. Let's start with adding a text shape. You can just alt click, put that in the center right there. For this example, I'm going to set this to Roboto, medium, right aligned, and also I think centered. When you do yours, you can use any uh, font that you want, but I think that Roboto looks a little bit more like the standard uh, text app fonts. So that's why I chose that one. I'm also going to put a align modifier on here. And on this align modifier, I'm going to set the X value all the way to negative one and leave the Y where it is. And again, all this will start to make sense as we, as we kind of keep moving forward. Next, I'm going to add a string, which we can add with a uh, control period string. And this one, I'm going to just name this input text because this is going to be the input text into the text box. Uh, so first what I do is I'm going to add some manipulators on here as well. For this one, I make it a change string case modifier. And I'm going to put this into uppercase. One of the reasons that I'm doing this is because since it's connected to a Google Sheet, if you have a client who's inputting the data, the data might not be in the exact format that you want. It's always best practice to set things up in your scene file so that they can take care of it on your end and that you know you don't have to worry if your client gives you garbage. I'm also gonna add another one and we will do a resize string. And always name the layers so that we know what's happening later on. Okay, so this is gonna just be a resize. This will drive the animation. On the resize modifier, what we're gonna do is on frame zero, we're gonna put a keyframe at percentage zero. And then at frame one, we're gonna put a keyframe at 100. And later we will drive this with an animation control. So I don't actually need any frames in between there. I just need this first point and the last point. Okay, so next we will add a JS math node. And shout out to Chris Hardcastle for showing me how to do this part. Um, if you're not on the Discord, go check it out. There's a lot of useful stuff. First, we're gonna add a couple of inputs to this. We need four in total. I'm gonna rename these inputs just so that we know what they are to frame number, string length, animation length, and modifier. And what's really important is that this modifier is set at least to one. If it's set to zero, then none of the animation will work later. So next we want to create the things that actually connect to these variables here. So the first one is going to be a frame behavior and we'll put that to the frame number. Next, we need to add another string. And so this one we're going to frame to get string length. And next we need to add a string length node. I'm gonna just nest that in here, just to keep things tidy. And for this, we are going to put the output of the string length string into the string length node. Now, the reason that I have two strings, the input text string and the get string length string uh, is because with the dynamic animation later, to get the proper string lengths, uh, it's just, it works out easier this way. So we need to pipe this string length node into the string length variable here. The animation for now, uh, can just kind of be whatever. I'm just going to put 30. And what that'll be is that'll be, we'll tweak that later uh, based on how things are, are writing on. Next, we're going to add an animation control to actually drive the animation. And we are going to connect the result of the JS math into the amount. Now, one thing that I haven't done yet, which is the most important part, is to actually put the equation into the JS math here. So the equation that we want here is gonna be N zero times N two divided by N one times N three. And with this equation, what you can see is that as the playhead moves, the result starts to go up and the animation control is also moving. So let's clear these out. We want our animation control to be connected to the resize percentage here. And so now as we move this, we see that the percentage starts to move as the playhead is moving as well. So the last thing that we need to do 
take our input text and pipe that into our actual text shape so that we can see what's going on. Now, one thing to make sure of that I mess up all the time is we don't pull the string of the input text, we pull the output of the input text there. Now you'll notice that the text has disappeared and that is because it is now procedurally animated. Okay, so now to test this out, let's open up our two strings. We have input text string and our get string length string. In the future, we are going to connect them to a Google Sheet. But for now, what we can do is we can actually pipe the string of the string length into the string of the input text. So what this does is that we only need to change one value here to change the text that's on the screen. So first, let's just use the default and we play that and we see the speed that the letters animate on, right? A little bit slow, but we can tweak that later. So now if we put in a longer text here, what we can see is that the letters still animate on at the exact same speed, regardless of if the input text is small or if the input text is large. So now let's start to make it dynamic. I've already imported a Google Sheet here, but if you don't have one or you don't know how, it's really easy. As you can see here, we have our Google Sheet. And all you need to do is click on the share button and then down here at get link, Make sure that it's set to anyone on the internet with this link can edit. Copy that link. Come back into Cavalry. And we're going to say import Google Sheet. And all you do is you just paste that URL there and it will import a sheet. I already have one, so I'm not going to do this one. So now that we have our Google Sheet asset, we can just pull it into the scene here. And if we open it, we can see that it has everything here. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to pipe the output from this into the get string length note because that is what's connected to everything else. And so now we can see, even though the text is going off the screen, we can see that if we check fixed row and we move the row index, it starts to update with the content that was in the Google Sheet. All right, so let's clean this up just a little bit. Uh, basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to group everything except for the text shape. Okay, now let's start to make it look interesting. What we can do here is if we right click on the text in the viewport and then go to add background to selected, this adds a box that is already connected to the dimensions of the text box. So what I'm going to do here is go to the bounding box and start to expand this a little bit, give the text some breathing room. Okay. And I think I'm going to make it just a little bit higher than wide. I'm going to make our text white and I'm also going to change this color to red. Now what you can do is you can go into the rectangle shape and then round off the corners as much as you want. You could have it really pill shaped or just kind of have it about here, which is, I kind of like this better. Next, we're going to add a little tail to the speech bubble. So let's just alt click on the polygon tool. We're going to set the size to three. And for this project, I already know some of these numbers, so I'm just going to type them in. For your project, you can, you can you know, make it look however you want. For this one, I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees. I'm going to make the radius 47 for both. I'm going to set the pivot X to minus 27. And I'm also going to skew the X at negative 0.58. And I will also raise the pivot on the Y a bit. This one we'll have to kind of adjust manually again later. I also forgot that the size of my text, and this is way too huge. So let's just go back here and drop this to like 50 or something. We can always change that again later. So next, to make the tail actually stick to the speech bubble, we're going to need to add a bounding constraint. And so I'm going to just pull this down here. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the rectangle shape to the input shape here, and then connect the out position to the out position of the polygon shape. Now we just have to adjust some of the settings to make sure that it actually looks right. And again, I already know some of these numbers that I want. So I'm going to put in 95 on the width and 100 height. And so now just to kind of see how things are working, what we can do is scrub through the timeline and kind of see how this works. Now, a couple things to note on frame one, it goes crazy and things get jammed up in the middle. This is because the text box technically has zero width. And so it just kind of freaks out and does this. The easiest thing to do is to just set your endpoint to either one or two so that you just never see that first, that first position. Now the other thing to look out for is that when it's only a single letter long, things are looking kind of weird. What I'm going to do, I'm going to clear this out. And I'm going to open up the speech bubble Google Sheet again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look through the text options that I have and look for one that has the smallest shape, which would be, in this case, an I. 
So here we have the thinnest shape. And so this is where I can start to play around with these things to make sure that it works on the smallest level. So if we go back to the bounding box constraint, we can play around with the height a little bit or the width, bring it in just a touch. And the other thing that I want to do just to kind of help everything kind of look cohesive in the polygon shape, I'm going to add a level deformer. This rounds out the edges and kind of makes it fit with the rest of the style. But you can see here, again, it's kind of messing things up. So here, what I might do is I might just change the Y pivot on the, the tail, just pull it up just a little bit. Okay, so now with all that set, we can preview our animation. And it's looking pretty good. Now, when I was originally doing this project, I knew that I was going to have to comp everything together later. I didn't want to have to deal with manually setting spacing or anything like that. So here's where we can start to showcase the real power of cavalry with dynamic renders. So first, what we can do is we will pull up our speech bubble Google Sheet again. If you hit Control B to pull up the render manager, let's add our current composition. Now in here, we can go to the dynamic tab, set dynamic and the amount of renders that we want for this is four. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the dynamic index and we are going to pipe this into the fixed row. So now each time we render something out, it will change the text. On its own, that's pretty powerful. So we can see here if we move the offset that as we render, it will automatically render out four in a row and it will change the text on each one. However, we can take this a step further and make it a little bit more dynamic. What I'm going to do first is make sure that the text shape itself is centered on the Y. And I'm going to pull this over to the edge about where I might want it in the final composition. Another thing that I forgot to do earlier is to make sure to set the text box size or else the text box will just go off the screen, right? For this project, I don't think that I want the text to be wider than this. So I will set, I will uncheck auto on the text box, and then just drag this out. Let's go to 750. So now if we have really long text, we'll see that it will just bump up instead of going off the screen. And this is also a good time to make sure that the text animation speed is correct and we can give that a tweak. This feels very slow. So why don't we change that first? If we open up our JS math, what we can do is we can change this modifier. So if we set this modifier higher to three, it will animate on much faster. This is still kind of slow. So as you're working on these things, you do want to be aware of what is the shortest text and what is the longest text. And make sure that the animation speed feels nice for both of those. For now, I'm just going to put this at five and let's continue. So now that we have this text box that is automatically animating and as you'll see, automatically keeping center in the frame. What I wanted to do was to change the actual composition size per render so that in the composition software, you could just stack them one on top of the other and they would all be equally spaced. In order to do that, as an example, we'll open up the JavaScript window. So with this window, we can test out our JavaScript before we put it into the dynamic render. I'm just going to copy paste this, but let's go through it. So first we want it to equal API get of, and now what we need to do here is put in the text shape bounding box ID. And then we're looking at the size Y. And so then that sets our height to the height of the text box, but with also a little bit of buffer that was in the bounding box shape. And then what we want to do is set a final height where we have the height that we just got plus a buffer because we want a little bit of space above and below the graphic itself. For this one, I just put 170. Next, what we can do is we do api.set api.getActiveComp and then set the resolution y, the height, to our variable final height. So what we are doing is we are saying in this comp, I want to change the height to whatever we just set here. So the first thing that we need to do here is change this variable to be the actual variable of the bounding box. So in order to get that, we can right click on the bounding box and do copy layer ID. Now here, we just paste it in like that. So now if we want to see this in action, we can just click run script. And you'll see that it's reduced the height of the comp plus our padding. So here, what we can do if we think that that's too little, we can set this 
to 27 on script. You can see you have more padding. So this is the variable that you would change to adjust what the final composition output is going to be. I like it at 170 though, so let's keep it there. Now I've done this here just so that we can test the script and see how it works and, and figure out what padding to use. But to actually make this truly dynamic, we need to copy this, pull up our render manager by pressing control B and in scripts, in our pre-render script, we just want to paste that here. So now what we've set up is when we render this out, it will render out four different versions and each version will change what text is played based on the dynamic index. And before each render, it will resize the height of the composition. The last thing that we want to do is we want to set our comp alpha to zero. And we want to make sure that our output format is set to QuickTime ProRes 4444XQ. This allows us to pull in the final renders into a different composition program and still maintain the transparency. The other thing that's important to note is that if you are doing dynamic renders, it will default to putting each render into a subfolder, unless if you make the file name dynamic. And because I don't want to have to hunt through a ton of different folders, what we'll do here is this is the red speech bubble, so it's red, and we'll just do dash, and then if you right click, you can select dynamic index. So now, as you'll see, it, that's updated here. As it renders, it will render red dash zero, red dash one, etc. It won't put them into subfolders, so using them later will be easy. So one final thing that we want to do that I always forget is to make sure that we are not rendering out infinite empty space at the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go set my offset to four because this is the largest, uh, this is the largest text box that I have. So now I can scrub through and say, okay, it takes about 95 frames to render that out. So what I'll do is I'll just in my timeline hit N at 100 so that now all of them will only render out to 100 frames. So now that we've got that set to 100 frames, what we need to do is set our dynamic index back to zero and now we can render it out and see what happens. So now I can see that we have our renders right here. If we open them all up, And for making the alternate speech bubbles on the blue side, all you need to do is duplicate this comp, move some things over to the left side, change your colors, re-render it out, and you're all set. My approach is also to just render out every single text option in both colors. That way, when you go to edit it for the final video, you have your options. Thanks for checking out this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you next time.